The Apostles of Jesus Episode 4 John the Son of Zebedee John the Beloved and his older brother James were among the first disciples called by Jesus to be apostles. Jesus actually extended the apostolic commission to John while the fisherman was at work mending his nets. Both Mark's Gospel as well as Matthew's suggest the choice of John and his brothers to leave their thriving fishing business to follow a then largely unknown itinerant preacher is evidence of their great faith. John is actually called by many names in the New Testament, including the son of Zebedee, the brother of James, the Beloved, the Revelator, and Boanerges, a nickname Jesus gave John and his brother, which means the Sons of Thunder. While less is known about James's personality, there is a lot in the New Testament about John's, which might help explain this nickname. John was, by many accounts, maybe 12 or 13 when he began to first follow Jesus. At the end of the ministry here, what, he's a 15, 16 year old. His traits are the annoying traits of somebody of that age. And just like a teenager may say things they probably shouldn't have said, he was a kid. He was young. Though John the Beloved and Jesus were relatives, in many ways he wasn't much like Jesus. For example, John, along with his brother, asked Jesus to allow them to sit on his right hand, a place of privilege implying one's chosenness in ancient times. This greatly upset the other apostles. Also, the New Testament suggests that John seemed to pick on Peter with some frequency. For example, John is the only of the gospel authors that depicts Peter as over-the-top dramatic. He quotes Peter saying to Jesus, don't just wash my feet, wash my hands and head as well. John is the only New Testament author to tell us the name of the apostle that rashly and inappropriately cut off the ear of the high priest's servant in Gethsemane. You guessed it, it was Peter. And John tells us Jesus rebuked him for it. While the Synoptic Gospels depict Peter saying he didn't know Jesus or didn't understand what people meant when they said Peter was a disciple of Jesus, it was only John who has Peter specifically denying being a disciple of Jesus. John tells us Peter was a slow runner and that he was able to beat Peter in a foot race to Christ's tomb. And it was John alone who tells of Peter's envy of John when Jesus informs Peter that he will eventually be crucified. Perhaps John and Peter had the kind of relationship that allowed for some teasing. We simply can't say. But whatever the relationship between Peter, the leader of the Twelve, and John, the youngest of the apostles, it's evident that John probably highlights Peter's weaknesses in a way quite different from how Jesus would have addressed them. Personality, Personality traits aside, aside Jesus, Jesus saw something, saw something raw, but raw but powerful in John. That's evident and by that's how the Savior evident placed, by how the, the, Savior Zebedee placed the son of Zebedee circle. in his inner circle. John was there when Jesus healed Peter's mother-in-law. He was present when Jesus raised the daughter of Jairus from the dead. He was in attendance when Moses and Elijah appeared to Jesus. And John was nearby in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus prayed to the Father to stop the agony he was enduring. While John struggled to look past Peter's inadequacies, Jesus chose to see beyond John's. One of the most touching images of Jesus and John and their close bond took place while Jesus was on the cross. Among Christ's very last statements was this, directed to his mother and John the Beloved. Looking down from his cross, Jesus said, Woman, behold thy son. John, behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her unto his own home. It's curious that Jesus would have John, rather than another relative, take care of his own mother. John was so beloved that when Jesus was at the cross, his mother had just passed away. Maybe within weeks before, maybe just a few days, he had just lost his mother. So Jesus, and this just shows his love, looks down at him and says, woman, behold thy son, son, behold thy mother. In other words, not only was he choosing somebody who was a cousin to take care of his mom, he was also choosing someone 
to take the place of John's mother and to help him with his grief and the loss of his own mother. Each of the Gospels speak of Jesus' siblings, giving the names of four brothers and mentioning multiple sisters. Of course, John records in his Gospel that Jesus' own brothers did not believe in him. Jesus may have sent his mother to John, her nephew, instead of committing her into the hands of his siblings because they had yet to convert. Many believe it was the resurrection of Jesus that convinced doubting family members that he was indeed who he claimed he was. There are several early Christian legends about the end of John's life. One claims that John was plunged unhurt into boiling oil. Another source, considered canonical by the Armenian church, says that John was forced to drink poison, but it had no effect on him. Because Jesus said to Peter, If I want John to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? The second century Acts of John states John had not died, but had been transported, meaning he was taken up into heaven. In support of this claim, Fox's Book of Martyrs states John was the only apostle who escaped a violent death. Regardless of his youthfulness, his thunderous personality, and even while he may have been a bit prideful, John found his way into the heart and life of Jesus and the church which he established. The beloved apostle had become the kind of person that Jesus felt he could trust, even with the safekeeping of his own mother. The man whom is attributed authorship of a gospel, three epistles, and the book of Revelation had significant impact on the church, but he also represents the dependability that should be manifest in the lives of those who love the Lord.